Hello friends, this video on Kinetic Theory Part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos. Repeat. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 7 before going ahead with part 8. So till now we talked about the perfect gas equation. Let us now see what is ideal gas. A gas that satisfies the perfect gas equation exactly at all temperatures and pressure is known as ideal gas. So when we started the topic on behavior of gases, what did I say? That normally all gases satisfy this equation at high temperature and low pressure, right? But if there is some gas which satisfies this equation at all temperatures and all pressure, then that gas is known as an ideal gas. But when it comes to reality, it is seen that no such gas exists. That is, not none of the gases is an ideal gas. Even if the, a gas satisfies this relation at low at high temperature and low pressure, they don't satisfy it at all temperature and pressure. So the concept of ideal gas is nothing but a theoretical concept which is helpful for many other theoretical studies. I mean it forms a basis of many other theories but in reality there is no gas which is ideal. So no real gas is truly ideal. So a gas which is not ideal is known as real gas. Real gases approach the ideal gas behavior for low pressure and high temperature. As I told you that normally in these two conditions that is low pressure and high temperature normally gases satisfy these equations. So we see that the real gases approach the ideal gas behavior or, or in other words real gases behave ideally for low pressure and high temperatures. Now we will look at the deviation of real gases from ideal gas graphically. I will plot a graph and I will show you that how do ideal gases behave or how should an ideal gas would have behaved and how do our real gases actually behave. So how the deviation is. So that is what we will see in this slide. Real gases approach the ideal gas behavior for low pressures and high temperatures. So we will graphically see the behavior of an ideal gas and compare it with the behavior of a real gas. So what do you think uh, the ideal gas behavior, how should it be represented graphically? As we already know that an ideal gas follows the ideal gas equation at all temperatures and all pressure. That is PV is equal to mu RT. Let us suppose for one mole. Let us consider this equation for one mole. So in that case mu will be equal to 1. So PV will be equal to RT or we can say that PV by RT will be equal to constant. So PV by RT becomes a constant value. So how the graph should be? The graph should be a straight line, right? Parallel to the axis. So it should be somewhat like this. So this line should represent the ideal gas behavior. Right? It has a constant value at all temperature and all pressure. Let us suppose if I consider temperature along x-axis and pressure along y-axis. So we can say that it has the same value at all temperature and all pressure. So this is how the ideal gas is represented. But when it comes to real gases, the graphs are somewhat like this. So we see that this graphs approach an ideal behavior or it resembles to the behavior 
of ideal gas at high temperatures and low pressure. That means when the temperatures are high but the pressure is low. So at those points it has some ideal behavior. I'm sorry, I missed out to tell that this graph is plotted taking PV by T along Y axis because this is what I told right that PV by RT is constant. So this cannot be pressure. So this is basically PV by T plotted along this axis and this is basically pressure which is plotted along the X axis. So this PV by T value it approaches the ideal gas behavior at low temperature at low pressure and high temperatures. So now in terms of molecular structure if you try to Think of this scenario. I mean, why do ideal gases behave like this? And why do real gases behave like ideal gas at low pressure and high temperature? What happens at low pressure or high temperature? The molecules are far apart, right? When you heat something or when the temperature increases, the molecules start getting even more random. So the molecules are far apart and the molecular interactions are negligible. Right? When the temperature increases, molecules move far apart from each other, so they, do, they don't interact much amongst each other. Now, when the molecular interaction decreases, we can say that the gas behaves like ideal gas. The ideal behavior comes into picture when we say that the molecules present inside the gas, they don't interact with each other. So, if each molecule is independent of the other molecule, there is no interaction and we say that the gas behaves like an ideal gas. So in terms of molecular structure also, we can justify this statement that real gases approach the ideal gas behavior for low pressures and high temperatures. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.